Hi everyone, this is Stéphane Wutarisha and welcome to this tutorial Drawing with 3D. So in this video I want to cover the uh, different techniques I use to create uh, line drawings from uh, a 3D, run, a 3D uh, geometry. And um, the main tools I'm going to use in these tutorials, they are um, as usual the brush, uh, Keyshot, you see the uh, Keyshot windows in the bottom left. This is my second screen that I recorded at the same time. Um, and uh, of course Photoshop. So nowadays I would say that 99% uh, of my work involves uh, using uh, a combination of these uh, three softwares. And I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of the techniques I'm showing here, they can be uh, reproduced in, a, in any combination of softwares. Uh, a key feature that I'm using in Keyshot is a, a shader that is called a Tune Shader, which is in fact a line shader. So it, it does line, it does a, an edge detection based on uh, several parameters. I'll show you that uh, later in this tutorial. And uh, it allows to only uh, present some edges of the geometry, which gives Quite night, uh, quite a nice result right out of the box. But um, it looks somehow a bit procedural, and uh, it doesn't work uh, as a drawing. What I mean by that is that um, a drawing for for a drawing to really uh, grab the att the attention of the viewer, you have to use line weight, and um, I'm. I'm a pretty bad penciler myself, so I won't pretend that I know a lot about uh, about drawing, but uh, at least I, I kind of understand how line weight works, and I'm using uh, this understanding in my, uh, in my uh, 3D drawings to make them uh, work as a composition, but only with lines. So I had this idea to, to make a yet another uh, fishing, fishing pot scene with a slum. Uh, this is, for many reasons, one of my favorite settings. And um, what I'm doing here is I, I'm starting to create building blocks for the archi architecture. Um, the idea to create, um, well, the thing I'm trying to do in each of my sculpt uh, that are meant to be used for illustration is um, to be very rough and very messy with the uh, geometry. The, the rougher, the, the, the more accident and imperfection there are in the, in the geometry, the more interesting the result for illustration because it, it does kind of the same thing that um, brushes could do uh, in Photoshop. It creates accidents, it creates imperfection, it helps to break edges and uh, break straight lines. So on my other screen I have um, references of, um, of various slums that I'm collecting over the time. This is um, an, ar an architecture that I love very a lot mainly because it's uh, it's very wild and it it has uh, an organic quality to it style style really love and uh, you know 1 billion people on earth are living actually in in slums so it makes sense to uh, for me to uh, to illustrate this um, this piece of architecture So I added this uh, this cube just uh, so um, to enter in the technical details here. What I'm doing, I'm creating um, building blocks like exact exactly like you would have for playing Lego. So I'm creating my building blocks and I'm using this uh, insert mesh feature of a ZBrush, 
which is a really an awesome feature, which allows you to um, create um, a brush which is composed of a, of a piece of geometry, a single piece of geometry that you can insert. And if you don't know how to use the insert mesh, I, uh, insert mesh, I'm inviting you to uh, just uh, head to YouTube and uh, search for insert mesh ZBrush, and you'll find really useful tutorials about how to use uh, this this tool. So this is this is my uh, usual um, workflow for creating environments. Uh, I generally do a lot of reusing. I like to create some base base elements that that are that can act as building blocks, and then I try to organize and repeat them and change a bit of the size, um, of their proportion, or the group relates one to another, and uh, it it helps to create a unified look first and second it it's a huge time saver and as you can see i'm staying the the rougher i can i really don't care about anything about clean uh, clean geometry or anything for me it's like playing uh, play doh it's it's a uh, just a tool i just want to create some volumes to interact with with a, a render engine and in that case, it will be a line rendering, but uh, for light rendering, it would be exactly the same thing. So you see me using another very useful feature of, uh, of KeyShot, which is the slice brush. And what the, size, the, the slice brush does is that it, uh, it cuts your geometry and insert uh, clean clean uh, polygons. Sorry, the dog is barking just uh, nearby and uh, it's disturbing me uh, a bit. So yeah, the slice brush, same thing. If you don't know how to use a slice brush, just go to uh, YouTube and uh, look for the brush slice brush. And, uh, Maybe one day I, I'll make an introduction to ZBrush, but I think there is actually people out there who are way more qualified than I do to make technical introduction to ZBrush. So I prefer to focus on, uh, on the creative stuff. So I'm inserting some wooden beam. I'm trying to change a bit of the orientation to, to create some diversity. Right now, I don't know exactly how I'm going to use that in a composition. As you can see, I, I didn't send them that to ZBrush yet. So I just try to um, think about uh, the composition in 3D space. That is, try to break volumes, uh, have both repetition and cow in the shapes. Um, try to say, the more organic as how organic as possible for this kind of architecture. So right now I created uh, two um, clusters that I added to my uh, insert mesh, as you can see. And for your convenience, um, I think I'll try to add the, uh, the real time process or at least sp sped up a little less so you can maybe come to some uh, interesting uh, moments of the uh, of the process if you want to uh, to have a closer look All right so another cluster and i want to stay a bit cartoony too one of the interesting thing that uh, I want to create right now, I'm thinking about it at the moment, is um, to have uh, to try to break uh, straight edges as much as possible. I don't know, but 
anyway breaks them. This is why I didn't start started with a, with a cube, as you saw me during the beginning. I started with a sphere that I tried to um, turn it into a cube because I, I wanted to make sure that I would avoid two straight edges, two regular edges, and uh, hopefully in the inside. Once will be in the rendering engine in Keyshot. This is going to um, to bring uh, somehow a bit of a uh, of cow to the line and um, a bit of life. And of course, I don't. Once again, I don't pretend to be a, a penciler. I mean, uh, pencilers. I, I, I highly admire what they are doing, and uh, this is my attempt to uh, to create uh, drawing from uh, the tools I am. I know what to use. One of the interesting things about um, using 3D is uh, the ability to uh, very quickly add details later on on the main shapes by using texture projection. And uh, because your geometry is here, by using things like box mapping in Keyshot, it's uh, very easy to uh, project any kind of texture on a geometry and create uh, um, texture spaces which are already wrapped properly around the geometry. You'll see that later. I'm going to use this feature a lot to create uh, details like, um, like doors and uh, windows and so on. So right now I'm using my um, my clusters, my three clusters to start to to build bigger adjustment of uh, of houses. And um, what you see me do sometimes is that I'm selecting with the uh, Control Shift feature. I'm selecting only a part of the geometry, and then I'm using the short the shortcut Control. Shift A, which selects all of the vertex, all of the vertices that are connected to the same uh, piece of geometry. So this is really useful to only move uh, one piece of a geometry in this uh, in this mess. So I'm looking right now inside the uh, ZBrush uh, default insert mesh, and I'm I'm trying to find some kind of pipe or some something that could be used to uh, to hold uh, some part of the houses and the, adv the advantage for 2d um, with this um, this way of uh, creating kind of a fractal uh, adjustment is that uh, because one cluster can be seen from uh, at least four different angles, uh, it's going to create, in fact, uh, four different uh, 2D projections. So um, I, even if I have three main clusters, just by, by moving them around and changing a bit of the, of the proportion and uh, readjusting some of the house, I, I uh, quickly created this. Um, this piece of architecture you see here. So now in the Keyshot windows, you can see I'm, I'm starting to look for a composition. Generally, I'm deciding for a temporary, comp uh, temporary com camera. And um, I will maybe Later in this tutorial, I don't remember, but most of the time I'm coming back to that camera. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to change the focal lens and the, a bit of the orientation. It's really a sketchy process, so nothing is, is uh, definitive at any moment. So 
I quickly created another cluster different from the other because I I was uh, worried that uh, the repetition would start to be too, too obvious. And some things I, I do very often with a uh, key shot is uh, cheating with a uh, scale. Um, quite often, uh, very wide focal lengths they bring uh, something quite interesting in terms of uh, composition because they create all these uh, converging lines, uh, which is really nice. But uh, most of the time, the, the scale is receding too fast in, um, in, in the Z depth. What I mean is that details start to be very, very high uh, toward the center of the image. So generally what I do is I cheat with the scale and I start to uh, to make the elements bigger as they go away from the camera, just to, to keep uh, things interesting from a composition point of view. Because I, I, I try to always keep in mind that uh, I'm doing a 2D illustration. I, I try to paint with, uh, with 3D, but uh, at the end it's, uh, it's all for a 3D image. So I don't care if it doesn't make sense uh, as long as it works uh, in the final shot. So I wanted, I wanted to contrast these very high details uh, clusters with uh, some kind of uh, artifact, brutalist, uh, uh, huge elements in the background. And this story in my, in my mind was uh, maybe, you know, it's on a, a world where an ancient civilization left these elements and um, people started um, to build a uh, city against this, uh, these giant structures. And I wanted to have something extremely simple, extremely straight and, uh, and pure. As usual, I'm I'm trying to re reuse I, as much as I can. And it's not only to gain time, it's really because it, it really helps to, um, to give a coherent uh, language to the scene. <clears throat> and right now, even in the brush, I'm starting to think about my negative space. Um, negative space, which is uh, the space between the volumes and this negative space is going to to give a lot of strength to the composition um, and I, I wanted to create this um, you can see uh, in the bottom left windows of Keyshot I wanted to create this very very uh, aggressive shape in the negative space which almost look like, you know, a gun or almost like, a, almost like a gun. I also, I also kind of like the negative, the other negative space, which is created uh, on the top left, on the almost center left, I mean, where the sky is meeting the, uh, the two used structures and uh, the cluster of other uh, houses. Okay, so I wanted to try something here, but I'm not going to keep it because it doesn't work. It creates uh, too much noise and it breaks uh, the, um, the benefits of having these, these flat surfaces in the composition. Okay, so now I, I selected just um, the bottom plane of a, of a cube just to quickly create a plane for the water. And it's a, it's a painful thing in, in a ZBrush, uh, which is the plane, the default plane, it comes in the other direction. So this is why I'm, I'm doing it that way, because uh, 
I'm sure it takes exactly the same amount of time, but in my head it's it's faster, so I tend to do it like that. So now I, I'm starting to concentrate um, about I, I I try to focus about my uh, foreground. So I want to bring something closer to us, something that looks closer than the the other side. And I, I try to find just the, the proper balance uh, with the edge of the frame. Because I don't want these houses to be too close to the frame because it's going to uh, to attract the eye too much towards the side. But at the same time, I really like all the uh, the negative shape on the on the on the left of the on the right of the image. Sorry, work. So I wanted to make sure I I kept this uh, this balance. Okay, so now I had this idea from the beginning to have a, a bridge, a wooden bridge. Actually, I don't know the exact word in, uh, in English. It's not really a bridge. It's, uh, it's what you use in, uh, in ports uh, so the, the boats can, uh, can stay for, for a couple of days or kind, kind of, of a bridge in a way. And um, you know, is this in this uh, port where there is uh, a lot of people living? There is also a lot of boats, and most of the times there is not enough place along this bridge to um, to attach all of the boats. So most of the times there is like this series of boats that are attached one to another, and people use the boats as a, as a mean of of moving from one side to another. Right, so here the, the brush does this funny thing, so there are that, that polygons that, that would stay. So most of the time I try once again to reuse as much as I can, reuse, reuse, reuse. Just, and it, 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 always, bring, it always brings these two benefits. First, it makes me gain a lot of times, and second, it, uh, it starts to unify the, uh, the language, the shape language of this scene. So I've been st struggling with, I don't know what, but I was struggling with something in ZBrush. All right, so I'm, for example, just moving one bin uh, on the side, just changing the proportion of this one. And uh, most of the times, once projected in 2D, it's perfect, perfectly enough to, uh, to give the illusion of uh, uniqueness of each element. So this whole scene with the design and uh, the, the full process until the end of this tutorial, it's uh, real time, it's uh, six hours. Um, you know, maybe I think a, a good penciler will probably be way faster than that, but uh, you know, I, I suck at drawing, so I'm doing this, uh, I'm, doing it, I'm doing it that way. So I always try to, you know, move things around, flip them, you know, in a, in a direction or another, just change slightly the uh, distribution of of, uh, of recognizable elements. Okay, so first thing I'm placing my bridge, and I I'm always I'm immediately going into ZBrush to see uh, how it works with the camera.
So I'm I'm trying to decide whether the, the scale is correct or not. And here I'm going to cheat about the scale, and I'm show you. I'm going to show you what I what I meant about uh, cheating with the scale. Uh, mostly with the bots that I'm going to bring later on. So I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put those bridge because obviously, given the number of people living here, we need a lot of uh, bots. So now I'm 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 super lazy and I'm I'm using this uh, bridge as a uh, pillars to sustain the uh, the houses. And I don't need too much of them because it's going to be too noisy. So I just want enough of them just uh, just so it looks like the houses are holding on uh, something. And from here, it, it definitely looks like bridges, but A, it could work with another angle of view, and B, uh, it, it won't show in the, uh, in the final image. It's just going to look like uh, pillars. So now about... And um, when I'm I'm doing 3D for painting, uh, generally I, I don't care if if the design is not uh, final or if uh, just it's it's uh, just not good because uh, most of the time I'm going to uh, finalize the uh, the painting in Photoshop. But here, as I'm going to uh, use this for a drawing. Uh, it it will be just maybe uh, once once the drawing is finalized, it's not su it's not super convenient to uh, to go to uh, change the drawing. So I want to make sure I have something just good enough right from the beginning. So I'm slicing the geometry just to remove the parts that. Uh, are approach bearing out of the boat, trying to remove some uh, some planks. And many times, this the things I'm doing they they won't show in the final uh, image. But uh, as I'm I, as I'm having fun, you know, I'm just doing it anyway. And each time I'm learning something new, so this is cool too. So I just want to add some planks for the people inside to sit when they are in the boat. Just so it looks uh, believable. And I always try to ask myself, you know, is it good enough? Uh, is it not good enough? Uh, I want to make sure I don't either overwork something, especially if I'm in production because, uh, well, people are paying for my time, so. And this line process, so as I, as I was saying in the beginning, it's very uh, useful when I'm designing in, in, uh, in 3D, instead of send, sending a very ugly uh, 3D render, clay render, which look completely 3D, I, it, it always has this kind of final look because it's 3D and some people, they, they can't imagine how it's going to look as a painting. So I prefer to send just a quick line drawing with a bit of presentation, you know, just some value to split the, the different grounds and uh, a bit of volumetric and a suggestion of light. And generally it, it, it gives a, a better feedback. People, the clients, they, they feel that they can ask for changes. So they, they don't feel bad because they, they are going to ask you to, uh, to change something, which is also very important. 
especially for visual development, it has to look in the process of being uh, changeable. If it looks final, you know, it, it's not uh, it's not interesting as a communication tool. And on the on the visual development of uh, Castlevania, I'm working on at the moment the uh, the Netflix series. I'm using this process a lot. And by the end, generally, I, I'm ending up uh, I'm ending doing a, a final version with a, a good clay render and a, a solid paint over so it looks more like a, a cool painting but uh, just for, for the purpose of, a, of a concepting an environment this uh, line drawing is, uh, is, is very very uh, effective. So what I did here, I, I just create, created a, a few variations of the boat because he, I felt it would look absolutely too repetitive. So I made uh, three different boats with the various uh, proportion in length and, uh, and width. And now I, I'm adding this uh, kind of uh, structure on one of them. And as you can see, I'm, I'm, I never hesitate to completely destroy something just to, uh, for the sake of, of being faster and uh, concentrate on the big shapes because, once again, at the end, if it's going to be a painting, it will be quite easy to uh, make, make any final uh, or decisive change in uh, Photoshop. And for, for animation, especially for animation, for visual development for animation, uh, it's quite interesting also to use 3D because uh, for storyboarders, it offers them a quick, a quick way to explore various shots. So it also has its own benefits in a production pipeline. And the storyboarder I, I'm working with, they, uh, they, they, they use it quite a lot for, for exploring uh, different uh, shots. And, you know, some, some storyboarders, they are, they are just so skilled. They, they can put anything in, a, in matters of, of minutes, but uh, for quite complex environments with, uh, you know, several vanishing points and uh, complex, uh, complex architecture and so on, uh, it can it can be a time saver. Just import the uh, the OBG in uh, in uh, Blender and uh, explore different cameras. Okay, so now I'm trying to separate some of the boats. So I'm using the same uh, uh, visibility, vi visibility feature and uh, Control Shift A to select all the connected geometry to quickly uh, make a selection. It's, it goes faster than uh, plain masking when uh, there is uh, intricate uh, elements like here. So I just want to make sure that things work in my composition. So. Uh, 
I always had key shot in the other screen. And I spent I'm spending a lot of time to look at the, at these windows and think about how different lines are flowing in what direction. Does a piece of geometry serve the purpose of the composition or the storytelling? Because uh, I want to make sure I'm concepting an environment, but I want also make sure that uh, the presentation work and uh, it's appealing and composition is a very important uh, part of that. So I wanted to add that boat here just for, for storytelling. I wanted to have something in between the main uh, viewer, the guy is going to be on the bridge, and the background, the huge background. And I wanted to have something we can jump on, you know, uh, so people or something happening. So it's not just us with this guy on the bridge contemplating this environment. So this boat on the on the left on the water is going to be an excuse to add more life and more diversity, but also to to add a third a third party in the in the image. So even even if it's only silhouettes, just to suggest the presence of people, the simple fact that there is people in here and they are moving toward they are they are moving physically towards the environment, it's going to to slow, I hope it's going to slow down the way we are jumping right away on the environment. I, I, I would like to, us to feel right here in this bridge with these people around. You know, I want this scale to be the main, the main place where we are, where we feel we are, because uh, this is what matters. If it's for anything, animation or you know, graphic novel or anyway this is where the action is going to take place. So this is the, this is the, the place that uh, the scale and the, the viewer, I want him to be, uh, to feel inside. So now I'm adding this uh, little boat. And as you can see, I'm starting to cheat with the scale. I'm trying to make them just overall a little smaller than uh, those on the on the on the main bridge on the foreground and in that case i just i, I did the opposite uh, of what i was saying uh, a few a few minutes ago so that is uh, i want to emphasize the distance i want to exaggerate the distance so i'm making them slightly slower slight slightly uh, smaller another bridge in the distance and saving quite a lot. Okay, so now I'm moving full screen in a key shot. And uh, you see me um, moving my uh, mouse all over the place because I, I was actually explaining something uh, when I was recording, but uh, I realized afterwards that it didn't work, so I'm doing it, I'm doing it again. So rendering for, for a line rendering, I'm rendering at, at 8K, 8K, and uh, Keyshot does an amazing job with this uh, tune, uh, tune shader, so it doesn't take too much time to render. And I used uh, 16 samples as my main uh, my main setting, but most of the time I've been stopping at, at 50% or 20%. So what I'm doing here is that I'm creating different render passes. So the way this uh, shader work, uh, you have um, a contour width, which is in pixel. The way I'm using it, it's in pixel. You have uh, an angle of detection, which means when two surfaces uh, have uh, an angle 
one from another which is superior to this setting, uh, the detection will occur and a key shot will render a line. So you can see with 15 degrees, it, it creates a very detailed drawing, but very, very busy, right? Using uh, 180 degrees angles, you can uh, create more of the of outlines. And the thing is, because I'm rendering at 8K, 8,000 pixels, uh, what I'm seeing here is not what I'm going to, do, to have, as you can see. It's, it's these are very thin lines. So for 8,000 pixel wide, uh, the, the main lines, they need to be set at at least eight pixels or even 10 pixels. So the contour quality basically it um, it dictates the um, the gradient between the edge and the uh, the end of the line because in fact these are not really lines these are tiny gradients which are running from the very edge of the geometry to the interior of the of the um, of the surface. So with with this uh, quality setting edge quality setting, it's possible to make uh, tight, tighter lines. And uh, you'll have the key shot files, you'll have the ZBrush file, so you'll be able to explore on your own all these settings. So now what I did, I imported all of the uh, renders in uh, Photoshop. And I'm going to slowly build up a drawing from from the various outlines from the various passes and once again the psd uh, is um, in the for in the gumroad package so it's going to be uh, easy for you to go inside the the photoshop file and and really see what each layer does but uh, the idea is to a have a main uh, a main render which is this one which is already quite uh, quite nice but it doesn't work. It doesn't really work as a, as a drawing in itself. And now each and every other render, which has different quality, it's either only uh, only outlines. It's uh, it can be uh, very uh, thin lines or, or very uh, very thick lines. And now I'm starting to use each of these passes to uh, to create a, a drawing, a real drawing. So I want to. Um, de-emphasize the lines that are in the background which with the smaller lines which is what i'm doing here so i'm bringing i'm bringing more larger lines in the foreground and it's a it's a so build, it's a slow build up process but by the end it brings us this uh, quite nice result So I'm creating mask and I'm painting inside this mask. And I'm not trying to be absolutely perfect in this mask because the, the more accidents I'm going to have, the more it's going to bring some, uh, some believability to the, to the drawing and make it look more organic, more, uh, more alive. So I'm, I'm emphasizing the, uh, the outlines here just to help uh, separate the various uh, main shapes of the of the drawing of the scene my outline pass alone so now i'm i'm slowly decreasing the opacity of all of the layers because i'd like to have some uh, some build up of the lines that I can use later on with adjustment layers like levels and so on to uh, to clean some part of the drawing and uh, once again bring a little more um, life to the lines. 
I'm coming back on the main outlines. Try to decide whether it's a, it's an improvement or not. So in this pass, I have quite a thick line, very, which helps to to really define the, the main uh, the main shapes. So I'm trying to think about also my line weight. So I don't want to have just a simple outlines in the um, in the very uh, exterior edge of the main shape. So I'm I'm also trying to uh, bring it bring inside. Uh, this line. Um, And this slow building process, it uh, it it uh, it does its job. I I think it does its job. It it's slowly breaking this 3D, really, the the obvious. Um, how can I put that? Procedural procedural look of the renderings. So it's some, you know, because suddenly uh, I feel like I know how to draw. Hey, I can draw. This is so awesome. I dreamed of this all my life. But uh, joke apart, um, I'm enjoying this process of, uh, of designing in uh, ZBrush so much that now uh, I'm not even trying to uh, to design in, a, in in 2D, of course, I'm I'm doing it for for mood, for atmosphere, for color researches, for ideation. Uh, I, I use a 2D only process for ideation for with a painting and so on. And, and maybe you you saw some of, of my uh, previous video about uh, thumbnailing in 2D with Photoshop. But uh, really for designing uh, environment for visual development, I. I love I love to use 3D. I love to solve the problems uh, in 3D space. It feels like I am uh, a kid in my room and I'm playing Lego. I'm doing a, a bit of a of detail pass, just to add some uh, some more details, obviously, because this is detail pass. I hope you are not too sick of my um, French. I think I'm I'm apologizing in uh, each and every video about that. But uh, did I say my French, my English? My French accent and my my nasty English. So 
So I think uh, I decided that I I w- I needed another pass. You know, something was missing. So I'm doing some a couple more passes just for for the sake of having a, the exact uh, line density I need. Okay, so here it is. I'm putting that on a multiplier and I'm slowly starting to unify the outlines with the inner lines. And this is a, an issue I often have with with my drawing that way is that uh, the outline is too strong and it starts to create a weird effect where it looks like a paper cut. So now I'm trying to add some, uh, what I want to do here is to add some some life to the lines. So, you know, I, uh, on each line, I'm trying to add a little, a little gradient, especially of these, on these big structures. See, just a little gradient that move from one corner along the line, just to uh, make the light not even and uh, a bit more organic. And technically, it is it is drawing, you know, it is it is line drawing. It's just that instead of just drawing by hand, it's a computer assisted. But it it doesn't prevent that line to work, uh, that drawing to respect the uh, the rules of a, of a good drawing. So line weight, plan separation, which I haven't done yet. And uh, I watched, uh, at some time, I was studying with a uh, Gnomon uh, workshop subscri- subscription. Everything I, I learned, I, I learned it uh, mostly with, uh, with Gnomon workshop and digital tutors. Well, when I started, at least. And um, there was this amazing videos from, uh, let me get that name again, David Finch. And uh, he spent a lot of time of explaining. Uh, he spent a lot of time explaining how line weight was uh, working. And uh, even though I wasn't uh, too much into drawing at that moment, I was totally fascinated with the with the line weight. And uh, I'm trying to implement that in my uh, in my three D drawings. And I'm sure once again a good penciler will will die seeing what I'm doing better. Anyway. So here I'm, I'm I'm starting to to add plan separation. So basically, I'm I'm adding a slight a slight gradient of white, and um, what it will allow me later on is uh, with a conjunction with with some texture and uh, and levels, I'm going to um, slowly break that line and uh, not let that uh, ugly uh, gradient right here. No, it's going to disappear, but with uh, it's go- it's going to look more like uh, a line uh, finishing uh, on itself. Right, this is what I'm doing here. So I'm bringing that here. I'm putting this layer in on a. Uh, light on mode, I believe. And I'm coming back into the places where I added this, uh, this gradients, this airbrushy gradients, just to slowly start to, uh, 
to again add more life to this to this line. These are just very very subtle variations, but uh, at the end they they add up one to another, and hopefully they they start to uh, to break the three D look. Same thing again. Basically, what I'm trying to do in a way is a, a diffusion of the values. That is where I have a, a non-black value on this, um, this light gradient I, I did with my airbrush. I try to, to deter that and uh, transform that into 100% black, but uh, with uh, some dispersion. So it, it textures the ends of the line. It brings some texture to, to these lines and uh, makes them slowly look more like a drawing, basically. So texture, okay, so here I, I want to have an idea of, of how it looks with a, a, a very simple presentation. So I'm, I'm creating a, a simple uh, texture pass. Final, I think this is the final uh, texture just to unify the, uh, the overall uh, group. adding even more layers on top of layers on top of layers. And after that, I'm wondering why I have sometimes 35 gigs scratch files. This is because of it. But anyway, here it is. Just a quick, a quick uh, texture pass, just to see how it looks, you know, when it's not like pure white uh, on pure black and white. So now, I believe what I'm going to do is a, um, a detail pass. So this is um, the projection feature, feature I was talking about. So I'm using box mapping uh, on the geometry, which basically decide based on the direction of each face, uh, a projection based on a cube. You know, is it looking towards the the top of the cube or the left of the cube or the bottom of the cube and it projects the texture based on this parameter. So I'm I'm doing like, uh, you know, six, eight render passes from, uh, I believe there is only two photos I use here. So these are photos of slums with uh, almost no distortion because they are taken uh, with a, a long lens and in front. So I'm trying to slightly move um, the placement of the texture. Generally for, for each photo texture, I'm doing like two different renders. So I'm queuing them in key shots so I can render them all at once. So key shot crashed and I restarted. Okay, so processing the queue and it's very fast. You, you just need like four samples 
and uh, with uh, I'm, I'm using the flat shader to do that in Keyshot. And with the flat shader and um, four samples, it just takes like one minute or two minutes for an 8K render. And uh, what it does, it it projects the texture all, all around the geometry, and uh, it makes uh, gain a lot of time. So right now in in uh, in Photoshop, I'm trying uh, two different ways of creating lines. So there is either the glowing edge filter, which can do that, but in this particular instance, it does it doesn't work very well because it uh, it creates uh, round edges all over the place. So instead, I'm going to use something else, which is, um, what is this name? Ah, yeah, the photocopy filter. As you can see, it does a better job of creating details. All right, so uh, I, I added a surface blur Bonus. So I turn this uh, this uh, layer into a smart object. This way I can uh, come back and edit my uh, my settings. So helped with the posterize adjustment layers, I remove the unnecessary details and now I'm using uh, this path to uh, quickly add uh, random details. So I'm just trying to you know a brush stroke and then I'm I'm, I'm coming back and removing parts. Of the of the texture, and the other advantage of this um, uh, smart object feature is that when later I'm going to turn each other of these textures in a smart object, and I'm going to copy past this uh, this uh, stack of uh, of effects of filters. Here I'm doing it, okay, and now I have the exact same. Uh, the exact same uh, kind of look, but with another uh, texture placement. And this is a, um, a creative trick I, I use quite often is to have something in place, uh, give some brush strokes to see what it does, and then come back and, and remove some of these, uh, of these elements. Because obviously I, I can't know uh, before I, I'm brushing what I, it's going to be in Dernis. Sometimes I'm I'm playing with the masks to to see what I have, but most of the time I don't know. So it's like um, a bit of a happy accident each time. And what you see me also select quite often is my ID pass. So I did an ID pass in Keyshot. So it's very in Keyshot Pro. It's very easy to do. Uh, there is a, just a, the push of a button to make an ID pass. But uh, if you don't if you don't have uh, the Pro version of Keyshot, uh, you can do this simply by assigning different flat layers to uh, each of your geometries and um, selecting a different color for each of these materials. And if you are not using Keyshot, but uh, another software, uh, there is also very, uh, very convenient way to create ID pass. This is this is something which is very often used in uh, in 3D. So if you are in 3D, I'm sure you already know how to create an ID pass. And if you are not with Keyshot, uh, as I said, it's uh, it's quite easy. You just need to assign different flat materials to each of your of the parts of your scene. Uh, given you don't have obviously a hundred, a hundred of them, but if you have like 10, 12 different parts in a key shot, you can quickly uh, assign uh, 10, 12 materials, assign them a different uh, color and render that at full resolution. And I have, I have a shortcut on my keyboard to quickly select this ID pass and uh, select the um, uh, magic wand. This is a process I was using when, when I was doing comic book coloring to, uh, to gain speed. And I, I, I kept this, this habit since. So I named my layer flat and I have my, uh, my little script uh, which select it. So 
I'm trying to decide for each pass what I can do with it, if it's going to uh, bring interesting details or not. Right now, all of these details, they are, not about, they are more about the overall impression of life and, uh, and business than a real detail. So it doesn't have to be extremely, uh, extremely realistic. It's just to imply, because underneath we already have the proper reference, photo reference. So uh, I know it's already creating the, um, the effect I'm looking for. It's the, I, I just want to imply man-made structures that are quite busy and uh, and make a, and create an impression of a of living place. And in the second part, I'm going to cover um, the comic book coloring, coloring techniques I was using when I. I was doing a comic book coloring, obviously, back in the day. And um, in fact, I, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, rendering uh, this way quite a lot. Uh, as you'll see, uh, it's, it's, it's quite fun. The idea is to separate uh, each and every uh, part of the, of the rendering process on different layers, because one of the main challenge of comic book coloring is that you don't get uh, feedback uh, of a scene right from the, the first page. So most of the time I, I, I would do like, you know, 10 page and finally get the, the feedback from uh, the author because there is the publisher who needs to give his feedback, the, the author, the penciler, the, the writer and so on. So, uh, sometimes you could get like, um, you know, 10 pages to modify, sometimes even change the direction of the light and uh, completely, completely change the, uh, the color mood, for example. So if you don't have a very uh, organized process, you know, you basically have to repaint all of the, of the pages. And uh, thanks to this process, you just have to change one page and then it's, uh, it's a matter of a batch reproducing the same thing in the other pages. Well, it's still something you need to do by hand, but uh, it gains a lot of time. So what I did here, I, um, I wanted these giant structures to look like uh, giant sculpted rocks. So I did a, a couple of uh, rock paths, uh, a couple uh, paths of paths of rock texture projected on this geometry. And uh, I, I used the exact same kind of, uh, of trick to turn this texture into, uh, into lines. And now I'm, I'm painting, uh, I'm trying to get uh, this texture to, to show. Trying to find just the right, the right balance of texture, just to communicate the idea of the nature of the, of the rock, but without uh, taking too much attention. I don't want this uh, structure to steal the, the attention from the main, uh, the main scene. And, and here I'm pushing the idea of, of, um, of um, texture just for the sake of, of uh, having 
a, a nice line art to uh, to introduce you for the next uh, the next the next part of this tutorial which is going to be coloring and by the end i'd like to have a full illustration with a, a cover level details but uh, done the the, the complete uh, comic book style but uh, for visual development, I wouldn't uh, go as far as uh, working this texture for this uh, giant crux. You know, just a quick texture textures pass will uh, will be just uh, perfectly fine to communicate the idea. So I want to break some more things. So I'm doing a breaking pass. You see how it breaks the uh, the lines and so on. I am adjusting my settings adding a mask as always and I'm painting into a mask because I want to make the to convey the feeling of distance and uh, so the, these lines I need to break them or otherwise they, they look too neat too clean I'm alternating between my 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 texture and my uh, black and white view because it it really changes the feeling. Okay, now I'm just adding just a few details by hand in some places where they, they were missing. You know, suggesting some windows, some ramps. And the, the thing with these details, these kind of details, you, you, can do, you could do that forever. So I'm just adding a couple of details here just for the sake of, uh, of feeling good about uh, having done something by hand, basically. But uh, I don't want to uh, to spend the, the whole afternoon to uh, to adding details because it's so time consuming. It takes it takes forever, and it's it, it's uh, it's brainless basically. You don't you don't need to think, and it's very relaxing. So. I know I could do that forever, so I, I'm trying to to keep the uh, the clock in mind because this is a uh, quite an important part. So I had this idea here that, you know, maybe we could have some kind of a very old boat structure that that could uh, hold this part of the uh, of the buildings, like a very old cargo or something like that. So I'm quickly suggesting that and uh, adding some beam. And later in color, I'll try to, uh, to bring that idea properly. But really detailing at this stage, it's like just, it's so fun. Everything is here. There is no need to think about perspective. Everything is in place. So it, it, it can be both super fun and at the same time, really a trap because uh, most of these details uh, at the end they, they won't show so you, you have to decide you know the, the time you want to invest in this you know ramps little bridges removing this part which was quite a uh, 
quite uh, not working in the composition. It was the repetition between the two structures was very obvious. Try to fix this, uh, trying to fix this roof, which doesn't work at all. And it still doesn't work, but uh, at least I tried. And there is uh, just some slight adjustment to the light drawing that I did later on, and I, I forgot to record that, but it wasn't it wasn't that much. So now I'm trying to make sure that uh, it's very this uh, this cross of uh, the various parts of the boats it makes difficult to understand what's happening in here. So this is what I adjusted later on, especially in front of this uh, of this boat here. I'm working on. I did just a few adjustments just to help in the composition. So I'm copy merging here to see how oh, Photoshop is going to render that because the uh, the real time rendering engine in Photoshop when you start to have uh, quite a lot of layers, especially with the high frequency details like uh, your textures and noise and so on, uh, once you you render it as a flat composite, uh, you don't have the exact same result. So this is what I was checking, just doing a copy merge once in a while to make sure it works and making the necessary adjustment if needed. Well, you know, I could, I could add way more, way more details in the foreground bots, but uh, same here, I'm trying to stay away from uh, too much details. It's, it is so time consuming. So now I want to add some figures. So I have this, uh, this brushes that I made a while ago. I, I wanted to, uh, to put that on Gumroad, but never had the time. So these are just uh, some like 12, 12 figures I have just in my hand see, for, for concept art uh, when you just need a figure somewhere, but it doesn't really matter uh, the design of the figure. So these are like uh, pre-made figure I did. Very low res. I don't want them to stand out on their own. So they are just like, you know, low res figure to suggest human beings. So for the scale, I'm putting that guy here, just for the scale, and I'm going to move it on the boat. Always keeping an eye in key shot, adjusting things based on the 2D projection. And on purpose, I think on purpose on the final uh, on the final uh, color red version in the second part. I'm going to keep this figure extremely simple. I I don't want them to be figure on them on their own. I don't want them to have a an identity or a design. I just want them to play the role of human beings being in the scene, just so the place feels uh, populated. But I'm going to keep that, them very, very simple, just like uh, simple silhouettes with a, a few touch of colors. <laughs> Funny guy. Bro. Yeah. 
So now I'm adjusting the duration of the, the placement of the main guy. Okay, I think we are almost there. Okay, so I, I I want him to do something, you know, just just not standing here. It's it's a bit weird, so I'm just posing it very quickly, like he's he's starting to hold something, or and there is lovers. Every scene needs a lover, and a little tree. Okay, removing his legs. Okay, now stands seagulls. I I wanted to have this uh, these seagulls flying in a concentric circles, just to add depth and. Uh, to add more, um, a better sense of uh, verticality. So there is something directly above us to look at. This way, it's not like you have the scene in front, which works only in one direction, which is the, the axis. And then you have that scene in the background, which works mainly in the uh, Y axis, which, which is uh, towards the up direction. So. What I want with this, with these uh, seagulls is to add a sense of height right in the main, uh, in the main location, because I, as I said before, this is this is um, the setting. If we are doing this for, uh, you know, an animated movie series or, or you know, a graphic novel, this is where the um, the action is going to take place. And I know these uh, seagulls are going to be very small, so I just want to keep them extremely simple and uh, just a bit stylized. Nothing complicated. I'm going to do three variations of that bird. And I, I made a, now I, I see that I made a, a small mistake, which is not to break the, um, where, where we should have apparent feathers. I forgot to break that by just putting pixels and making, bringing some noise. And uh, in the final uh, drawing, it's going to show, it's going to create an artificially um, soft and, um, and smooth line on the wings, on the wings. And uh, it doesn't look as, uh, as nice as, as I wanted, but... Uh, it allowed me to, to sketch in perspective uh, a hundred birds in a, in a very uh, short amount of time. So I'm using this array mesh feature, just doing slight adjustments. So basically, I'm going to do this for all of the three variations of the stern, and then I'm going to remove there and there uh, some elements to make it look more organic. So I'm saving the uh, preset uh, on my uh, disk, so I can uh, reopen it for the other seagull. And maybe there is better way to do that, but. Uh, If you know of a better way, don't don't hesitate to uh, to drop me a line to to tell me that. So 
So now I'm decimating each of these um, of these subtools. So uh, they are a bit uh, easy to manipulate, easier because right now, as, we, as you can see, there is a lot of polygons, way too much polygons. Right. So now this is better. So now I'm starting to um, to bring some uh, some life to this cluster. So I'm going I'm going to uh, I did a quick um, polygroup uh, auto group feature just to group things by uh, geometry continuity. And now I'm I'm randomly removing some of these birds just to to try to make this uh, easier to read. And most of the things I'm doing in 3D and, and in composition for 3D, they, they start with a, a random thing, semi-random things, which is a, I'm, I'm trying to design a potential for, for composition in a scene, but I don't know exactly what is going to happen. So it's only when I'm importing that in Keyshot and starting to move things around that I'm trying to spot something that works in composition. So right now I'm not sure hundred percent that it's going to work and uh, I'm importing that and ZBrush did, did uh, quite a funny things. I, I I imported it twice just to make sure but I still don't know why ZBrush uh, did this but anyway Okay, so here I, I remove the background element just for the scene, just so it would be easier for me to send the scene to Keyshot because uh, with the full, uh, the full geometry, 16 million polygons, it takes uh, each time uh, 10 to 15 seconds to transfer in a Keyshot. And uh, if I repeat that process like uh, 10 or 12 times, it starts to be uh, a bit uh, of time. Just waiting for the rendering engine to uh, to be back. So at that moment, you know, it doesn't work at all. The effect I was looking for is not there. It doesn't work. So I'm going to just move things around, try to remove even more elements, just to see if I can make it uh, more obvious. I wanted to have that, that spiral thing uh, dropping down from the sky towards the main character. Also, I'm, I'm just experimenting with various things. Moving, moving uh, the cluster up down. I'm going to rotate it on the center to see if it works better from another angle. And now I'm starting. I'm starting to spot an angle that works. So uh, I'm trying to slightly move it without destroying uh, the effect. Because I wanted this effect to be there, but not too obvious either. I just wanted to keep this organic feel of uh, of this uh, spiral of uh, of seagulls. So now I'm just copy copying some elements, moving them around, just to uh, make the uh, the pass the spiral pass more obvious. It's really fine tuning at this point. So yeah, I'm cheating with the scale just to see if it works better at a, at a composition level.
Okay, now I'm adding a third row and this one I'm going to flatten it quite a lot because uh, as it is very high in the sky, the uh, it doesn't matter and uh, I think it, it brings uh, less noise to, flat to flatten it like that. Slightly moving, moving things around and I'm I'm slowly going toward the, the direction I wanted. So now we are in the last part, which is the presentation part. So what I'm doing here, I, I'm, I'm patching, I call that patch, uh, the new elements on the scene. As with the rest of the drawing, I'm trying to use the, uh, the width of the line and the, um, the density, the opacity of the line to, uh, to help uh, read the distance. bringing some more um, shape uh, separation with just some uh, slight, slight gradients behind the characters because I don't, I don't want the, the lines to connect too strongly. The, nice, the lines of the background elements, I don't want them to connect too strongly with my foreground elements. And as I did uh, Previously, I'm going to create a quick, um, a quick pass to uh, transform these uh, gradients into a, a deter, a deter head, uh, hundred percent uh, like that. Just painting. Okay, so I, I just so it look a bit nicer. I don't want it to look like uh, just a, a, a brush a stroke of, a, of that uh, Photoshop airbrush. Okay, trying this with my uh, my texture to see how it looks. And at this point, now I just want to make a quick a quick um, lighting pass just to, for the purpose of gaining time, you know, just for presentation. So I just want a pure black and white pass. And I'm looking for, for a nice uh, composition and uh, I found this one. I think it, uh, it worked it work quite well. See so it renders in uh, 30 seconds. I rendered it at uh, 2K, I think. Doesn't need to be uh, too details because uh, it's going to be hidden beneath the line art. So even, even if it's a bit, bit blurry, it, it won't show. And this presentation work, you know, it doesn't take very long, but it helps a lot just to really bring uh, the idea of the composition. So in the context of working with, uh, with clients and, and not uh, uh, personal work, it's, it's quite important to uh, just make sure that you, your work is uh, presenting the best you can for the time you, you have. So this presentation work, it takes like maybe, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, but it, it makes a, a big difference.
right? So I'm uh, I'm organizing my uh, my layers based on my on my new uh, set of render. Okay, so now I want to do just a quick um, depth pass that I'm rendering at 4K, 4K. A Z depth pass. Once again, for illustration, uh, Keyshot is amazing for, for these passes because it, it does the job really quickly. And because it's these are 32 bits uh, um, renders, you can uh, import that in Photoshop and uh, really fine tune the, uh, the range of value you want. And here I, I'm just experimenting, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with a, a multiply uh, fusion mode and then I, I've been moving to, um, to overlay just to see uh, which works best at uh, helping reading the, uh, the composition. Trying different different uh, combinations, and finally this is the uh, the one I uh, I choose. So here I'm using the posterized layer with a bit of a of a texture beneath just to break the, um, the gradient in the sky to make it look more, more organic, more um, watercolory like. Trying something that doesn't work and, and that doesn't make sense either because the sun is a uh, is way too high to have a, a shaft of light. Right? So I want this uh, silhouette to, to read better. And I'm using this uh, navigator windows quite a lot. I'm either using this navigator window or I'm using a, a second, uh, second window, a duplicate of the actual one, just to have another scale, another view of the same, uh, of the same image. Okay, bringing some more separation behind the buildings. So now I'm bringing one of these gradients I, I love so much. Thank you, Steambot Studio, for these amazing gradients. Just mixing the same gradient with different. Uh, one is reversed uh, for um, in comparison to the other, and uh, I think the first is on uh, overlay and the second on color. And I'm making a copy of my uh, ID pass, and I'm using this copy in overlay mode just to to add some more shape separation. And it brings us just a touch of uh, of color variation too, 
because um, my gradients, I think they are set at like 90% of opacity. So a bit of these crazy colors are, are showing uh, through. Okay, I'm doing this uh, color balance over on top of it. Okay, so now I just I just made a, a copy of this uh, of the line art beneath, just to have um, to have it on top of everything, just to bring back uh, some of the of the drawing on top. Because after all, it's a, it's a presentation of the drawing. So I don't want the drawing to completely disappear and uh, become uh, and turn this into an illustration. I still want it to be a line drawing that is presented with a, a slight touch of colors and lighting. So I, I applied my depth mask onto one of these uh, two paths just to make sure I have 100% of the drawing in the foreground. Adjusting the color and the values of the sky. So back in real time, here is the final, uh, final piece. And uh, this file right here, it's, it's really huge. It's a uh, five gigs, it's a five gigs uh, PSB. There is a uh, quite a lot of layers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, shrink down this file to maybe 4K instead of 8K. Because I think at 4K, you will have plenty enough resolution to see how it works. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next part, which is going to cover comic book coloring techniques. See ya.